capitalist. During the height of the Cold War, Russia was working on a secret scientific mission that, if successful, would have changed the course of history. However, Project 12 Inches was eventually deemed too dangerous. It was shut down and the scientists involved were to be eliminated. However, three of them managed to escape. Present day, a young man named Alan boards a bus and sits behind an elderly gentleman. Suddenly, a man with a gun barges into the bus, calls the old man general, and warns him that the past must be reckoned with. However, Alan quickly draws a weapon and kills the assailant. He orders the general to follow him to a safe place and leads him away. Meanwhile, in Washington, an annual conference by arms dealer John Henderson is taking place. He announces a new project that will enrich investors and position the U.S. as a leader in the industry. Simultaneously in Miami, the leader of a mercenary group, Tubil, arrives and meets with his accomplice, Irina, who has arranged a meeting with the club owner, Misha. The businessman, for a fee, handles sensitive tasks and now reports that his people have found someone in Syria. However, the information has become more expensive. Tabil does not like this development and Misha's bodyguard is killed, leaving Misha at Irina's mercy. At the same time, one of Tabil's men, Carl, infiltrates a hotel room. He is examining some documents when his partner Bruno warns of approaching danger and heads to the room where Carl has already disposed of two guards. Tabil and Irina, having obtained the necessary information from Misha, also leave, taking out more guards along the way. Henderson thanks his wife for her help with his work as Carl and Bruno enter the room, indicating that the job is done. Later, the group meets in Los Angeles at Henderson's house. They report that they have the coordinates of the targets. However, all the information will only be available in 48 hours when they arrive in Syria. Henderson hands over the group's earnings, asked to be informed when they capture Bulanovsky, and bids farewell. The next day, the group arrives in Syria. Bruno attends a prearranged meeting where he has thoroughly searched and led to an old man who takes his money and shows his product, a suitcase with a banned substance. At that moment, Carl enters, and together with Bruno, they kill the old man's bodyguards, much to the old man's surprise, as the man has practically signed his own death warrant. It then becomes clear that Bruno is not interested in the substances. He shows an old photograph of the old man standing next to a group of people in Soviet military uniforms. The old man's face changes. He refuses to give the coordinates. Carl remains alone with the old man. Meanwhile, Alan places the captured general in Arena's car. The man is brought to a bunker where Tabil greets him, calling him by his real name, Bulanovsky. He shows him a similar photograph where the man is dressed in a Soviet military uniform. Alan informs Bruno that the old man is in their custody. However, Bruno suddenly reports that they are being watched, suggests leaving without them, and sends Alan a photo of the dead old man, the dealer. Bruno returns to the room where Carl is counting money received from two Koreans who just bought the old man's substances. As soon as the Koreans leave, Bruno coldly kills his partner. Meanwhile, Bulanovsky is shown a photo of the dead old man, the dealer. He is surprised that he was found, as he was the second escaped scientist. But when Henderson enters and greets him like an old friend, Bulanovsky realizes who is behind these militants. Henderson demands Project 12, and when the old man refuses to help, he is shown a photo of his daughter. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, Bulanovsky points out the entrance to the facility on a map. However, they need a key. He shows them where it is, but warns that the bunker is designed in such a way that one could wander there for years without finding the right corridor. Therefore, the militants tell the scientists that he will go with them. Later, Alan and Bruno discuss Carl's death. Bruno explains that Carl was tracked by the old man's men, so he was to blame. He reminds Alan that after this project, they too will have to hide for a long time. They now need to retrieve the key from the body of the third scientist, buried in an old crypt. The militants exhume the coffin and retrieve the key. On the way, Bulanovsky explains that when they realized the dangers of the project's closure, they divided their knowledge. One took the key, the second the coordinates of the facility, and the third the access codes. Henderson was merely working with them. Project 12 was developing a new weapon. Soon the group reaches the facility, an old abandoned temple in the desert. Bulanovsky opens the doors, revealing a vertical shaft. They secure themselves with ropes and descend into the old bunker. Bulanovsky explains that this machine was built during World War II and employed 600 people. Following signs visible only to him, the group finds an electrical box and the path ahead lights up, impressing them with the quality of Soviet construction. Bulanovsky mentions that there are three more exits, but none can be used to transport the prototype. The militants split up. 
Alan and Irina explore the second exit, while Bulanovsky leads the others to the second sector. Irina reports finding an entrance covered by shrubbery, and Alan plants explosives. However, he overhears conversations in Russian, unable to identify their source. Meanwhile, Bulanovsky brings Tabil to a laboratory and advises against learning what was done there. Suddenly, Alan hears a warning that he is in a restricted area and sees a soldier in a Soviet uniform. Irina also sees the soldier and aims at him. When the strangers refuse to present their documents, the soldier activates a flamethrower. Alan shoots, but the soldier seems unaffected. Irina and Alan use all their ammunition before the soldier finally falls. Tabil confirms the death and asks to fetch Bulanovsky while Alan tries to recover. Irina rushes to the laboratory but finds neither the scientist nor Bruno. Tabil goes to look for them and Alan climbs up to set up explosive devices at the exits. After completing the task, he informs Tabil that he is returning. Irina receives the message and prepares to blow up the tunnel. Suddenly, a huge soldier with dead eyes grabs her. Alan rushes in and opens fire. Irina does the same. The giant ignores the bullets and falls to his knees only when they run out of ammunition. As if taking a breath, the soldier raises his head and activates his flamethrower. The pair barely escape. Hearing the screams of his comrades over the radio, Bruno demands that Bulanovsky tell the truth about what is happening. He refuses, and Bruno orders him to be taken to where the project documents are stored. Meanwhile, a Soviet officer dines to the anthem of the USSR in another room when a soldier reports intruders in the bunker. The officer orders the exits to be sealed. The militant group discovers the first soldier's body is missing. At this moment, Bulanovsky brings Bruno to an office where a folder containing the main documents of Project 12 lies on a table. Tabel, Irina, and Alan fall into a trap. Three soldiers block their way, and they realize they have no chance of breaking through to the next floor. Bulanovsky shows Bruno the arsenal, and while Bruno fills his pockets with grenades, the scientist escapes. Suddenly, a broadcast begins, and Henderson's voice explains that the super soldiers were designed to destroy any enemy. As he speaks, an alarm sounds, and the soldiers begin to gather in the central bunker area. Meanwhile, Bulanovsky finds a high-ranking Soviet officer's uniform and puts it on. Henderson's voice gives the sector number where his men are and orders the soldiers to destroy the intruders. Irina, Tabel, and Alan encounter the soldiers. As soon as they open fire, Bulanovsky appears and helps them hide in a room. He explains that the soldiers cannot be killed easily. They must be dismembered or burned. He leads them to the arsenal. Bruno, with the documents, heads to the main exit. Henderson, seeing this, orders two of his goons to capture him. However, Bruno manages to hide from the shots and, diverting attention, throws a grenade at the mercenaries, clearing his way to the exit. Meanwhile, Bulanovsky brings the group to the arsenal and sets a condition. He will show them the exit if they retrieve the documents stolen by Bruno. The men arm themselves with everything they can find and leave. Bulanovsky stands at Henderson's office door, ready to end the game. However, Henderson reminds him of the millions at stake. He doesn't care if the world is on the brink of death. Under gunpoint, the scientist leads the businessman to the main Project 12 specimen. Tabil finds himself in a washroom, approaches a faucet, and senses movement behind him. He realizes he is under the gun, but when he turns around, no one is there. Suddenly, from the other side, a mirror shatters, and hands of a Soviet soldier grab and start choking him. Tabil manages to turn his gun and shoots the invisible enemy. Bruno arrives to help, throwing grenades at the soldier. Tabil does not rush to meet him. Meanwhile, Bulanovsky brings Henderson to a cabin where a super soldier lies, and the businessman demands it be activated. The scientist does so. Tabil realizes Bruno has always played on the opposite side. The men decide to settle who is stronger without weapons. A deadly fight ensues, with neither able to gain the upper hand for a long time. Suddenly, Irina intervenes, firing upwards, and the men separate. Tabil expects her to help him, but she hands the rifle to his opponent. However, it is out of ammunition, and Tabil manages to escape. The super soldier activates, identifies himself, and announces readiness to destroy the sector where the other soldiers are. Henderson tries to cancel the order, but the soldier identifies him as a capitalist and forcibly puts his helmet on him. Meanwhile, Alan finishes setting explosives in the sector. Arena leads Bruno to the exit shaft she found. Tabel meets Bulanovsky and admits he couldn't retrieve the documents. The scientist shows him the exit to the third floor from where they can escape, but the boys must destroy the documents. He will take care of the bunker. Meanwhile, the super soldiers gather in the central bunker area. 
Bulanovsky asks Alan to cover him while he goes to the soldiers and tells them they are the best but lack rational thinking. The scientist heads to the mining system, and when the super soldier asks him not to do this, his eyes emit a red flash. However, Bulanovsky manages to pull the handle. Tabil reaches the water-filled side exit of the bunker. The explosion destroys the underground. Irina and Bruno burn in the fire, but Tabil manages to dive into the water. The old church collapses. When the smoke clears, an injured but alive Tabil emerges into the desert and looking at the ruins, heads toward the distant city, unaware that an unharmed Henderson emerges from the rubble and watches him with glowing eyes. The film ends here.